Good afternoon, welcome on in for another episode of From Day One. The afternoon edition is along with us here on the 20th. And today we ride with our good friend Mike from Law Talk with Mike as we're back in courtroom 3B with Judge Middleton, the nice old cutie patootie cuddly bear. As he has to handle, let's just say, the world's biggest epic moron who wants to recuse Middleton of all things. So again, along with Mike from Law Talk with Mike, let's get started. The defendant's request and the plaintiffs and the defendant waived the right to have hearing trials, so I blocked out the entire day of trial and we'll see that. Yes, Judge Bill. Um, attorney Harold Welch is here from Google Aid of Western Michigan on behalf of the defendant Robin Short. Mr. Short, would you come up and have a seat? Mr. Nicholas Spiegel is here on behalf of the Enchanted Glen Apartments. As I stated, the file number here is 211563LP. I, I love the name of the apartments, Enchanted Glen. You, you know it's anything but Enchanted. <laughs> or a Glen. <laughs> and I didn't even realize this till now. So I was wondering if it, if it was pro se, but it sounds like there are attorneys on both sides of this. So it looks like the defense attorney brought this motion. We oh, had God. a very annoying uh, squeaky fan back there in the ventilation system. It's driving me nuts. And the... Uh, custodial maintenance staff fixed it. I'm very happy today. It's the first time something happened. Um, at any rate, the matter is set for trial today. Yesterday, well, two days ago, my uh, defendant's motion was eliminated. And then yesterday, sometime in the afternoon, I received the defendant's motion to disqualify the trial judge and brief and support. And plaintiff's response to defendant's motion to disqualify the trial judge. So we have to certainly address that matter first. And by the way, disqualifying the trial judge means they're trying to disqualify him himself. It's what they're trying to disqualify. I'll give a little background. I'm not under oath, but I'll give background as to what happened or what transpired. Uh, this matter has been set for trial today for some time, and uh, it was set for trial once before, and maybe a couple of times before, but at least once before, and it was adjourned because of conflicts with attorneys' trial schedules. Um, we learned yesterday, I don't know, late in the morning or early in the afternoon, that there had been a fire at Enchanted Glen Apartments. I think someone called down from the prosecutor's office and said, you know, there was a fire there yesterday. Your Honor? Yes? Could I interrupt briefly? Um, no. I'm concerned about possible witnesses uh, being in the courtroom when we're in the direction of the next review. Is there a lot of the rules of the court? Is there a lot of the rules of the court? Is there a lot of the rules of uh, I'll let the manager stay. Everybody else is today. Please wait on the hallway. All right, this comes up a lot, and we get a lot of questions on it during the Depper trial. trial. So, so uh, you, you want to you want to exclude witnesses? You we need to call the motion to exclude witnesses. So the purpose for that is you don't want witnesses listening to other witnesses' testimony and changing your testimony as it goes. This motion has brought a scotch early. To, to my way of thinking, thinking although the judge granted it, it's fine. It really, really isn't a matter of course. It's not even like a, a disputed issue. But, uh, you know, the judge was just sort of giving some background right there. I, I guess, arguably, you don't want the witnesses to hear that. So that, that's, that's all that happened. Thank you, Jack. I figured we'd get to that at some point, but I didn't know if we could do this. But there's no harm. <clears throat> Other than they got set on a different part. <laughs> <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, we had heard that there was a fire. They, they called my secretary. She said, Do you hear there was a fire there? And I said, No. So we looked to see if there were news reports about it, and they weren't. So the magistrate 
uh, Mark Trowbridge, who works for me, was on the phone with Chief Mark Breaker from the uh, Cohen Police Department. And he asked Chief Breaker, was there a fire in Enchanted Glen? And well, someone said the whole the place burned down. And I said, well, it didn't all burn down. There's a number of separate buildings there. So anyway, he asked Chief Breaker, was there a fire there? And uh, I want to know how, how uh, Judge, Judge Milton's uh, familiar with the Enchanted Glen. Breaker said, yes. That would be a good question, and, especially uh, if you want to recuse him. And he said, well, what unit was it at? And he informed the uh, magistrate that it was at 470 Unit 36, which is the unit that's the issue here. Um, he told the magistrate... What are the odds that uh, Judge Milton's had a meth charge emanating out of that unit recently? There was no power, and he did not believe the apartment was habitable. And so, I, in a very poorly typed email, I sent a message to both counsel. <clears throat> That's a word out. Did you lose your Zoom audience there? You said it at 10.24. I guess it was oh, okay, in the morning. Uh, it didn't seem to be written very well. I'm advised by the chief of police of Cohen. There should have said, was a fire in Robin Short's apartment number 36 last night, and it's presently unlivable. And I sent that to Mr. Spiegel and to Mr. Welch. Uh... Uh, he's so good. I mean, he's in this small town where no one's watching him well, except for everybody on all talk of Mike. But, but the rest of the world doesn't care what's going on in St. Joseph County. And he is, like, so on top of it. He he documents all this stuff, and he's transparent on the bench. He he, he, he discloses all the communication. And all it was was overhearing something that anybody in town would have heard. Then, sometime later in the day, we got Mr. Welch's motion to disqualify so, uh, Mr. Welsh, after putting the premises from my perspective on the record, do you wish to speak further to your motion? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and we, we wish to underline in no way, shape, or form are we indicated in the court that uh, this is an anything improper. Um, our concern is with, uh, of course, the, uh, the appearance of impropriety, and this is an unusual situation since Your Honor is a trial of fact. This was a jury trial. Uh, perhaps those conversations would have been uh, completely harmless or not not raising the possible specter of uh, disqualification. Um, so, you know, as I, as I viewed the canon and preparing my motion and uh, considering what happened, um, my conclusion was that the rules are not to get us as close to the line as possible. In other words, but the rule has to keep it far from the line. So, um, the appearance of impropriety or ex parte conversations, um, you know, that's where we're at. The conversation happened. Uh, we don't think Your Honor uh, purposely tried to investigate the case, but in this complicated case, Your Honor is the prior fact. Well, why is it relevant? Why is it relevant? Well, I, as Mr. Spiegel said, okay. I sent it out as a, right. and we still need to have this link in here in the line of fact that it was fired. Yeah. Uh, why is it relevant that I know that there was a fire? Okay, well, uh, it's an it was read in the newspaper. It's an in the communication um, that you had knowledge of somebody gave you not only the fact that there was a fire, but description of the severity of the fire. And, uh, uh, and, and therefore, you know, we, we need to have an impartial fire for that who doesn't have the specter of a possible uh why is the fact that there was a fire there relevant to their effort to terminate the tax? I, I can't believe an attorney brought this motion. Yeah, I, I really can't believe an attorney, attorney brought this motion in a small town where you only have a few judges. I, wow. I, that, that is not a good basis. He's respectful about it. I will give him that. But it is simply not a sufficient basis for this motion. And an obvious delay tactic to the point of 
bordering on sanctions kind of stuff. There's no appearance of impropriety. Oh. Oh. If I had one of my associates come to me and, and, and suggest this, I would say, we're not doing that. I'm not putting my signature on that awful, awful idea. Where you could have conversations with anybody about anything, uh, about cases that are pending in court. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, it's just wise to avoid the appearance, okay? To, to, to not get close to the line and say, yeah, you've had information about. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's a good, good question, Patrick, Patrick because I think he'll get a fair judge. judge. Uh, I don't know all of St. Joseph County, but, but, but my, my top suspect is that you get a Judge Dutzman, who, who's, who's, who's a, a fine guy, guy in, but uh, not, not nearly as nice as, as Judge Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. But you're still going to need to try to wrap. That's not in, you know, bringing forth Congress in this system that we can avoid any of the right? It's not that you did anything wrong. But it's the appearance of it that's right here. And that's part of the communication about facts of the case. Well, I guess he's just saying uh, uh, communication about facts of the case outside of the presence. It, it, it does strain the definition. That's, that's, a, real, that's, that's a, a really sophisticated question, question by the way. way. Uh, thanks for asking it. But, uh, the, I, you know, really what you're worried about in an ex parte communication primarily is that you're, you're speaking to one of the parties outside of the, of the presence of another party. Not that you're living in a community where you happen to catch wind of news. That, that is not what, what we're worried about. About. Okay. It's tainted the situation. So we would respectfully ask that you um, that you just qualify yourself. And uh, now I want to I want to address one thing. Uh, counsel on the other side mentioned that I didn't contest in that Well, affidavits are for people who have personal knowledge to testify. I don't have personal knowledge, so there is no affidavit apparent needed in this motion. Um, if you're under denied Okay, okay, so there's the difference between a, an attorney and a soft sit. When, when an attorney discusses an affidavit, he actually knows what he's talking about. No, he's brought a bad motion. <laughs> but he's familiar with the concept of an, of an affidavit. And he didn't attempt an affidavit of truth. Is there a motion that we would ask that uh, the motion be referred to another judge in the district court uh, for a developed hearing on the motion to disqualify? Mr. Spiegel? Yes, Your Honor. Um, basically, I'm going to say the last question. I don't know if you will rule it as must. It doesn't say you can possibly, you can, permissibly, catch an affidavit. It says you must. They did. Um, but let's, let's get, get down, down to the substance. I think, I think Your Honor has it exactly right. right. Uh, we're not here today to determine Mr. Stewart's tenancy because there was a fire in one day. Uh, this term has been, I think we filed this back in September, October of last year. Um, we had, I think, a first hearing in December, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, this has been going on a while. The fire on Monday is not why we're here to terminate Mr. Schwartz's tenancy. Uh, to Mr. Welch's uh, representation of the court that we intend to make it a relevant part of our case, I told Mr. Welch and what I intend to do today, that the extent the fire matters at all is simply background for the rationale of why some of our maintenance people were there on Monday and what they observed about Ms. Stewart's apartment that would have had nothing to do with the fire. Uh, they're going to offer some testimony on how many dollar proof that, in fact, they had seen the uh, fire detectors, the smoke detectors, were all disconnected in their apartment, which has nothing to do with the fire. The fire didn't do that. It's something she did. Um, but the fire simply was said, why were they in there on Monday? That's why they were in there on Monday. Other than that, the fire doesn't mean anything in this case. Uh, I guess the fire was on Tuesday. It was no, I thought it was a Monday. Tuesday, Tuesday morning? Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Sorry. Sorry. Fire, they were Tuesday down here. Monday and Monday was Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. See, they were on Tuesday. But I, I missed it all. I didn't think not. There was the motion on Monday, and, and again, I was going to throw your motions the last year. So the fire was yesterday. They come in yesterday, and they see that. That's the only reason we're talking about the fire at all, so that's why they were there. 
Other than that, the existence of the non-existence of the player doesn't matter for this case. I disagree with the question I asked about communicating communication. You didn't communicate with uh, my party. You didn't communicate with Mr. Welch's party. Uh, you didn't communicate with a witness. Uh, as far as I understand, no one's calling the chief of police to call him down here to testify about anything today. So, to be frank, as I told Mr. Welch on the phone, I disagree with the motion because this, to me, sounds like more taking up us to kick the can down the road. Mr. Welch has already been in this department now for something like eight months after this thing was filed. Um, we need a resolution. Uh, the dependency need a resolution. Um, and, and yeah, more delay, more delay, more delay. So, uh, th th this attorney smooth. Uh, he, he he hits the nail on the head on on all fronts here. This is obviously just a delay tactic. We don't have an ex parte communi communication. We don't have an appearance of impropriety. We have someone who they filed a termination of tenancy on in the fall. Couldn't get them out because they filed a jury demand, and and they're just d delaying this. This is really kind of sleazy stuff. You're entitled to file a jury. You're you're entitled to, to do lots of things and assert your rights, but attempting to disqualify the judge here is on the edge. Your Honor, I don't think there's any reason to grant the motion. I don't think there's any reason uh, to continue the delay. Uh, we should have the trial today. If Mr. Welch wants the motion referred, I guess, to somebody else, I think we can take the findings of that. If we have to come back another day because another judge feels differently, I suppose we can do that. But I disagree that uh, we should have to reset now the trial yet again, <coughs> recalling that there was an original conflict, I think, back in March, which was one of our witnesses, to be fair, um, over something that's a run here. I mean, like better terms, there, nothing that you heard that there was a fire matters today's trial. If I offer that as some type of evidence that she needs to be evicted, I expect Mr. Welch will say objection of relevance. Mr. Spiegel told us that was not why she was going to be evicted, and you would sustain such an objection. That's it. Uh, you heard about something that isn't going to determine about this case. I, I haven't been down here in a year or two, but I, I often recall times where you will call something about a witness or a defendant. Um, it's a small town, I understand that. But I don't think that's ever, to my view, uh, impinged on your ability to make a reasoned and impartial decision. So I, I don't think this motion is necessary uh, to be granted, and I'm kind of surprised it was blocked, to be honest. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You, fine, uh, you can get sanctioned for filing. Uh, 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 first of all, while you're under the reason that I've been is because the plaintiff requested an adjournment, uh, which I granted as a courtesy, as a professional courtesy, as an attorney should for the administration of justice. But I also wanted to call your your Honor's attention to the NCR 2.03. Um, D as in Douglas 3. Uh, in a single Judge Court or a general judge's chief judge, which I've shared in my address, chief judge, on the request of a party to tell the judge shall refer the motion to the state court administrator for assignment to another judge who shall decide the motion to no. So if you are inclined to deny our motion uh, for disqualification, we would respectfully ask that you, um, that you refer this to the state court administrator for assignment to another judge. I don't think I have any uh, choice in that part of the matter. But, first of all, I'm offended by this emotion. So are we, Your Honor. You tell, you tell him, Judge. So am I. I'm surprised he was that upfront about it, but good. Personally, I find it as a personal insult to me. Um, and I don't B, I don't think any communication was being proper. I set out the circumstances of what happened. B, it was relevant to me as to whether we're going to have an all-day or two-day trial on this matter on an apartment that apparently has burned, and I don't know to what extent it's burned. Secondly, if we go through the proceeding and the defendant is subject to termination of tenancy, she loses her right to probably find another subsidized housing uh, and the ability to get such an apartment as she has. So if the apartment burned and the defendant decided we didn't need to go through this hearing, she wouldn't end up with a termination of tenancy on her record 
reason for leaving last residence apartment burned. Translation, you are a crappy, crappy attorney, and you're not even helping your client. Extremely. But in a very, very nice Judge Middleton sort of way. So relevant to her. <laughs> um, I'm also concerned this case has been very delayed. The plaintiff asked uh, to have the matter heard. The defendant filed an after jury trial. We have not had a jury trial on a landmark tax case in years. 50 years. <laughs> 15! Oh. Because of the demand for jury, this case was delayed and delayed because at one point we weren't able to conduct any jurors. And then it took precedence over criminal cases. So a difficult time to find a place to put this on a jury day. So I sent it for a jury trial, and Mr. Steele had a conflict with another court, and he requested an adjournment, which he graciously granted. Uh, but that's the only delay that's been up to them. So then I had to find another jury day to put it on, and then the UA jury. Um, so much of the delay was because of the defendant's demand for a jury trial and all the legal Okay. Issues that have come up in the matter. Okay, for you. Uh, so, regarding the motion to disqualify, the code will cited by both parties is 2.003. Maybe uh, make one for the members. The grounds for disqualification is found in 2.003C. One, disqualification of a judge is warranted for reasons that include, but are not limited to, the following. The judge is biased or prejudiced for or against a party or attorney. That's an OSG reference. The judge is biased on objective and reasonable perceptions that neither have a serious risk of actual bias impacting the due process rights of a party or has failed to adhere to the appearance of impropriety standard, which she's referring to the code of judicial conduct. Right. The judge has personal knowledge regarding the disputed evidentiary facts that concern the proceeding. I do know that there's a fire there, which I probably would have known if I'd listened to the Sturgis radio on my drive in this morning. I don't know the extent of the fire, I don't know the cause of the fire. Um, the judge has been consulted or employed as an attorney in the matter of controversy. No. The judge was a partner of a party. No. The judge knows that he or she is individually fiduciary, no, and then the others. So it's under, I guess, B, uh, appearance of impropriety, and C, the judge has personal knowledge of disputed evidentiary facts. Um, well, I didn't know the specific, although it sounds like Illinois. I mean, whatever, whatever. it's going to be similar in every state. But, but boy, the boy's irritated. He pulls out the code and reads the whole darn thing. Uh, to, to make sure that his ruling is clear. For example, let's say I talked to Chief Brinker and said, well, I was out there when there was a great big party at Robin Short's house, and I had to get everybody out of there, and uh, children were there, and it was a terrible situation. That might be relevant. Uh, I've had no such conversation, probably no such thing took place. But the fact that I heard secondhand that there was a fire in the defendant's apartment from Chief Brinker, I do not believe, raises the standard of impropriety. Particularly because, as Mr. Spiegel says, it's not relevant to all the allegations of violation of the lease. Yes, this is absolutely irrelevant. It's a termination of tenancy because they haven't been paying rent. And they haven't been paying for rent long before last fall when, that, when this action was filed. The fact that they coincidentally had a fire in the complex last Tuesday is absolutely irrelevant to, to the to the case before them. Absolutely irrelevant. Correct. And, and then the judge happened to hear about it because he lives in the community. Like probably 98% of the people who live in the community. Correct. Uh, if we have to move this, it's going to be difficult again to schedule it. All the witnesses are here. Uh, people are prepared. Although I get a motion to eliminate two days before the trial. It's been pending for seven months. Um, and we blocked out the time. Um, defendant, current rent is zero. 
So we contemplate an escrow order, but there's no effect to an escrow order when her rent is none. Uh, so the delays... Now, this is really despicable. It is just a pure delay tactic, as was the jury demand. But that's well within their rights. you got to find a time and have a jury. But they just they happen to hit everything right. They've got COVID, and they file a jury. And, and now we're going to try to do this all so that someone doesn't have to pay rent. I don't know who's putting their license behind this sort of thing, but it, it's not a good look. Certainly not. The plaintiff wants the defendant out. They wanted her out since they filed the matter in the fall of last year. They continue to want her out up to and including today. And uh, all the delays are to her benefit. She continues to stay there against their wishes without paying any rent. So uh, my desire would be to hear the case today. I don't know the extent of the fire or what the condition of the apartment is. Um, let's say a meteor hit and the whole place was disintegrated, and then I guess there'd be no need for a termination tenancy hearing. But there'd be no tenant. As bad as the is. I am not the chief judge. I'm the presiding judge of Freeby District Court. Judge Pattison is the chief judge. I was the chief judge for many years and alternate that position. So Judge Patterson is here. I'm going to see if he can hear your request for a de novo hearing on the motion to disqualify. Uh, that that um, that rehearing, that de novo rehearing on the motion to disqualify yeah, in front of Judge Stutzman is not going anywhere. It wouldn't go anywhere in front of, say, Judge Simpson. It wouldn't go anywhere in front of, in front of uh, Lenise Bryant. Uh, I, I mean, I can go down the list. Uh, Judge Gauthier would not have it. Well, everybody's here. Uh, that may not be feasible, but I'm going to see if you can hear your motion de novo right now. So uh, your motion to disqualify is denied. Okay, so he's denying his motion, and he's going to try to give it to Stutzman, like, immediately. Look at the position they put him in. Uh, the, the, the plaintiff, they brought out all these witnesses. Delay! This, this is irritating. To say the least. I don't believe I have any personal knowledge of disputed evidentiary facts. So, I will stop the record. And turn off the live feed, and uh, we'll see if you have it. Everybody sent that to me. I, I really did think that was pretty interesting. Uh, that, that's, that's one, one where you might have uh, accidentally learned something. Not for me, maybe, maybe, maybe from, from Judge Milton and Reading the Code. code. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty interesting you got to see really set forth the idea of a motion to disqualify. Uh, you, you know, I haven't looked it up, up in, in Illinois. Illinois. You know, in Illinois, Illinois this, this happens, happens all the time. We get uh, sent out to, especially in a jury, because we'll go to a pool. Yeah. You can take a substitution of judge as a matter of right. right. Like, like yeah, we, we, we just get a substitution of judge motion ready because if we just don't like the trial judge that we're in front of, we think that they're not going to call it straight. We just hit him with a substitution of judge, and you don't have to give any basis. Just you get one free. It's that simple. simple. Uh, once a judge in Illinois, is probably true in every state, but it just happens to be because once a judge has made a substantive ruling on a case, you cannot take a substitution of judges no matter what. Right. Then you have to, it has to be for cause. You have to show something. So, um, you know, and that's very close to this. I, I think here, I don't know if he's made a substantive ruling, because if he's done the scheduling, that, that would be a, an interesting fight in and of itself. But he chose to say that because uh, Judge Middleton's court was actually contacted, not him. And you hear secondhand that there was a fire in town, which is just something Judge Middleton would know. Because, you know. That, that's, that's what, what Judge Middleton does. does. Um, you, you know, that, 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 that's some, some, some form of impropriety. I would not sign that motion. As, As an officer of the court, you wouldn't waste your law I would say, that? I am not, not sending this motion to anybody who suggested that I do such a thing. thing. I'm, I'm just not comfortable that, that doesn't make sense. sense. 
I, 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 need, I need a proper, proper basis. And, and I'm sure, sure not going to do it in, in, in a small county that, that I practice in that's, that's only, only got a uh, handful of judges. Because there are a bunch of judges in the county. I don't think you can get away with this stuff in Cook County. There's a bunch of them. They don't like each other. The whole thing. You know, they'll shoot me. Cook County is not a county. It's like you might have four or five judges, and they all know each other. It's a small club. And, and they, they generally, generally like each other, other at that point because they, they, just, just because, because they don't have a choice. choice. Could, because, because they, they have, have to work together. together. So uh, it, that's just, just a poor decision on all fronts. And, and I don't know what, what the financial incentive is to pay for that. If you've got, got someone who hasn't paid the rent for hour, they're not a good client. They're not paying you. It's not like... It's, it's not, not like you're getting, getting rich on this representation. Why are you putting, putting your license on and, and, and reputation on the line for this sort of thing? thing. I, I, I don't, don't understand, understand it. it. I didn't even name the attorney. I don't, I don't know the attorney. attorney. This, is, this is a guy. Aside, Aside from, from the fact, fact that this, this uh, motion had no basis, he otherwise seemed really sharp, which makes it even worse. He sort of softened it at the end. I like his presentation to the judge. Aside from the fact that the motion was meritless. Aside, Aside from, from that, he seemed to know the law and, and, and it was well spoken, spoken uh, respectful, respectful, all that. All that, business. Business. It was, it, that, that was a weird one. It, it was, was very interesting. And I apologize um, if, 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 if any knowledge was gained here. here. Again, again, I did, I did not, not mean that. I did not intend that. that. And, and I'll, I'll try not to let it happen again. again. Yeah. I, I think, think I'm going to go over, I'm not sure, but Natalie. Thank you, Mike. And I do appreciate it that you guys stick with us. I don't know what's going wrong with the technical aspects of the game. I'm going to get that worked out before Part B later today. If I can get it working, maybe we'll have a bonus episode with the content we weren't able to bring you here in a course of Sids, Karens, and Auditors in the evening, and of course, Art Bell in the overnight. So until then, like, share, and subscribe, be kind to one another, and release the Kraken. Since we march along here this afternoon and every afternoon, here from day one. Have a great afternoon, everybody.